Hey everybody, it's Jackie with Surfing Biscuits and we are cooking up old fashioned cornbread dressing today. Um, real close to the way my granny used to make it, but I actually maybe have come up with just one or two little improvements to granny's recipe if you can believe it, if you can believe it. So we're going to start with, um, now I, I use a gracious plenty of onions and celery. I think that's the key to making good dressing. I start with a lot because I cook them before I put them in my dressing. So I've got two sticks of butter in this skillet and I'm going to add in three chopped sweet onions. Now I'm using sweet onions. If you use a different kind of onion, you, you may want to cut back just a little bit because um, they're not as strongly flavored as some others. And then I've got a whole head stalk. Now I just confused myself. Stalk. <laughs> a whole bunch of celery. Stalk. What is? Y'all go ahead and tell me what this is called. But this is the whole deal. The whole celery deal, including the leaves. I don't know why people throw away the leaves. Minced up, and that's going to go in here too. So one whole thing of celery, whatever that thing is called. Three sweet onions going to go in. And then I'm going to cook that down um, until it's, a, it's reduced in half. The volume is just about reduced in half. So it's going to go for a little bit, maybe 15 or 20 minutes, because I don't have it cooking it, cooking real hot. I don't want them brown. I just want salt. All right, so to do this, you need a dish pan bigger than your head. A lot of people cook their dressing in a, a roasting pan. They mix it up in that and cook it in that because you have to make a lot of dressing. And you hear my dog wants some attention. She's going to have to wait just a minute. So I've got one batch of my southern buttermilk cornbread and then one batch of these little jewels. And these are the things that I'm adding to Granny's recipe that I think is going to take it over the top. Now she always put biscuits or bread or saltine crackers or something like that in hers. But I made a batch of sage onion biscuits. So the link to these biscuits and the cornbread is going to be on my blog. Um, so now you just want to start crumbling. You want to crumble up your biscuits. And you know, if you've got throughout the year, if you have leftover biscuits, leftover cornbread, leftover rolls, leftover any kind of bread, just start collecting them up in a bag in the freezer. Throw them in there and then keep them for when you want to make dressing. In fact, that's exactly why they came up with dressing, was to use up bits and pieces of bread and cornbread. I think that is so smart. That is just so smart. So we're going to crumble all this up. Okay, so I've got these, the, the celery and the onions cooked down about where I like them. They've softened up enough and they've um, got a little bit compacted. Now I'm going to put about a half a cup of fresh sage in here. Um, th this is something different that I do that my granny did. Granny never used fresh sage. In fact, I never knew her to use any fresh herbs at all. She used poultry seasoning in her dressing and that is poultry seasoning. You can still buy it. It's primarily rubbed sage or dry sage but I just prefer to use fresh when I can. I usually grow sage, but this summer killed my sage. I mean, it just wiped it out and I haven't replanted it. So I had to pay the man for this sage. I bought it at the grocery store. But that's okay. So now, the reason I put the sage in here is because, remember we started out with two sticks of butter. So the butter is making a little sauce here and I want the flavor, oh my gosh, it smells. This smells so good, it just smells like Thanksgiving. It is, I love, I love the fragrance of, of sage. But I want the flavor of the sage to infuse all the way throughout the butter that's in here, which will in turn infuse all the way throughout the dressing. It's just more flavor. It's just all about the flavor, people. It's just all about the flavor. So I'm just gonna give this a, another little quick stir. Oh my goodness. I mean, I could just stick my whole head down in this pan right here. This frying pan. All right. And I've got my cornbread and my sage onion biscuits. Y'all got to make those biscuits. Got them crumbled up in here. And now, 
I'm going to pour all this in there. Just like that. Ooh, the skillet's heavy. Mercy me. Get that out of the way there. Okay. Now, if, if you feel like you need to use your hands, because some people just are, are, are convinced that they cannot stir the dressing <clears throat> with a spoon, then I'd recommend you let these celery and onions cool off before you do that. Because like you just saw I dumped them in here hot, so I'm using a spoon just to mix them up. I have one gallon of chicken stock, my homemade chicken stock, in here. You never know how much stock you're going to need. And you use the best stock that you can get. Either make it yourself, homemade, which is nothing to make homemade chicken stock, or buy good quality chicken stock from the grocery store. But get stock, not broth. Because stock is made with the bones and the skin and the fat and everything. Um, and it's just more flavorful. So what we do now is we just start pouring and stirring and pouring and stirring and pouring and stirring and pouring and stirring, and pouring and stirring until it's to the right consistency. So I wound up using that whole gallon of stock. I know that seems like a lot, but you know, we got enough dressing here for the state of Florida. Okay, maybe not Florida. Maybe Vermont. There's a lot of dressing here, so you need a lot of ingredients. So now, from here on out, it's all about tasting. You cannot make dressing without tasting it. So you just taste and decide if you need more pepper, more salt, um, more sage. So that's, that's the three decisions you gotta make. Okay, so I've got, got it like I want it now. I added uh, a lot of black pepper, some more salt, and some more sage. Now, here goes the beaten eggs. Two beaten eggs that I'm gonna put in because the tasting part of it's over. I did not eat raw eggs. Although I can tell you, if y'all weren't watching me, that's probably what I would have done. Mix your eggs in here. All right, so now we just gotta put it into our container to bake it. Now, <clears throat> I obviously have a <laughs> way more younger dressing than what's gonna fit in here. I'm only, I'm only keeping a small but, um, batch of dressing for us this year because I'm only feeding a little group of people. So I'm gonna save enough for us and then I'll put the other bits of it in disposable containers and I'm gonna give it away. So I'm going to move my dressing over here, and we'll just start spinning it in. We'll start cupping it in, <laughs> because I'm using a cup. A mug. We'll start mugging it in. And that can have a whole bunch of meanings. So this casserole dish is filled up. And I'm going to put this in a 350 degree preheated oven for 30 to 45 minutes, um, just until the top starts to brown a little bit. And here we are. Traditional Southern cornbread dressing. It just doesn't get any better than that. Made with buttermilk cornbread and sage onion biscuits. Y'all have got to try those biscuits. It's all in its pretty little serving platter. Um, it's beautiful and it smells delicious and the top is so brown and I like all the corners because that's got more of the crunchies to it. And then I've got um, this casserole that I'm going to freeze unbaked and then I'm going to give it to somebody. And so part of their Thanksgiving is already done. So thank you for hanging with us so much today. We, we appreciate it. Get these recipes and more at SerpentBiscuits.com. God bless you all. Y'all come see us.